Hoi hoi, hello and welcome to the Meet Maastricht podcast. I'm Katrina and together with our resident local Lucy, we will be exploring some of the amazing stories that make Maastricht so special. So sit back, relax and join us as we learn about our favourite Dutch city. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 17 of the Meet Maastricht podcast. Uh, We are sorry, we are a week late. We had a little technical trouble and so we had a little holiday. (laughs) How are you, Lucy? Well, um, not actually feeling like we had a holiday, (laughs) but uh, yes, there was a... There was a break in our uh, uh, broadcasting, that is uh, absolutely true. I mean, you, 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 I suppose all our listeners do realize that uh, neither you or I are uh, <laughs> uh, professionals at this. Uh, we are just, Aren't we, uh, Lucy? <laughs> consummate, we, we are just consummate Maastricht lovers and we want to <laughs> keep telling the stories of this town to everybody who uh, wants to listen. Yes. Um, so, you know. Um. So, for those of you who've been waiting anxiously to hear about our our, (laughs) our podcast this week, what are we talking about this week? I think I announced this when when I uh, when I uh, picked the uh, the subject. During our during our last last podcast, uh, some, something extremely not not obvious. It is uh, it is not it is not a building in the city, no. but it is a vast complex of caves mm-hmm. in uh, one of the hillsides outside the city. And uh, there is miles upon miles upon miles of those, even with the enormous amount of miles that we have lost because of uh, cave-ins and because of the destruction wrought on St. Peter's Mountain by the cement factory there, Mm. which just basically ate away the hillside to produce cement. But some of these these complexes are very well guarded now and maintained, and they have particular names. And we're looking at one particular one, and it's called uh, the Jesuits Mountain. Mm. And uh, that in Dutch that is Jesuitenberg. Jesuitenberg. But I think to understand this correctly, um, you should not think of the Dutch word berg as in mountain, although of course we would all be inclined to do so, but that, that it is much more logical. There would be a connection to the German word berg, mm. which, me- which means mine. Okay. Because that's what all these caves are. They are mines. This the the, the soft sandstone here, formerly the bottom of a sea, mm-hmm. and all sorts of little animals living in there, and then sinking to the bottom, and then building over thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This soft sandstone has been used as building material for ages around mm. here. And you you can still see it all around you in the in the city and in the countryside. The marl or merigel mm. is a is is very soft. Is a yellow when it's freshly cut. Right. So you see when places are newly built or newly restored that they are that they're a soft yellow, and over time that will uh, that will harden into a grayish kind of color. And it uh, and it is it has been it has been used for 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 building churches and houses and you know you name it everywhere so you can still see it everywhere around you but that has pretty much stopped in the hills around Maastricht towards the middle of the 20th century there are still small specialized mining operations in the hills further to the uh, east because there is still there is still restoration work going on so some some mining has to continue and uh, to to provide uh, the restorers with uh, new stones ah, yeah and you can you can see that for instance in in progress uh, uh, in the restoration campaign currently underway at Castelbourgare to the north of the city we will we will put that in one of our cycling tours i think Ooh. in the yeah the trip to the the trip to the north, so to speak, along the Maas. Then we will visit Borghare and have a look uh, have a look at the castle, and you can see fresh marl put into place. Ooh. So, how did the Jesuits Mountain get its name then? Well, because the Jesuits basically took over. That huh. is that is 
basically what happened. These, these mines have always been used as a playground for the local people and especially the youngsters as a, as a hiding place, uh, as a, a route across the border to smuggle goods in times <laughs> of differing tariffs but also to smuggle people in times of war. Yeah. But it was basically open. It was it was accessible, and uh, some of the people visiting there in the course of the 19th century were Jesuit students. So they would come from all, all over to the to the uh, great Jesuit academy at the Tongerse Straat, which is now the building for the Faculty of Business. I think what's it called? It's uh, the yeah. I think it's the business and the School of Business and Economics. Ah, okay. I think. Yeah. The one with the yeah, big well, that, archway out the front, yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was the big, the big, a big Jesuit convent and academy to train yeah. new Jesuits. So there was this big collection of uh, of young guys in 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 that building who during the week had a very 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 tough schedule mm. of uh, studying uh, of an extensive curriculum, but also of uh, yeah well service to society in all sorts of ways. And they had one day off, and they very much appreciated then getting out of the building and getting out of the city, you know, <laughs> getting getting some getting some fresh air and some exercise and all of that. Yeah. And they over the years they they made a small sort of holiday house on top of the <laughs> Cano Mountain that is that is still there. That's called Campagne. Okay. And you know, the, uh, romping through the woods there and walking the fields. Of course, they would happen upon the entrances of the of the mines underground and uh, they went exploring like everybody else did mm. and over time they developed this habit of drawing on the walls like so many other people did as well <laughs> but also uh, sculpting things yeah and this and this beca this became their their regular free time activity you know entire teams of them would march into the into the mines and uh, Make ever more elaborate sculptures in this in this soft stone, which is of course mm. very easy to work. And of course they would have they would have difficulties with uh, with the 95 percent humidity and Oof. with uh, the 10 degree Celsius cold, and also with the layers of uh, flintstone in the in the in the okay. soft sandstone. So you know you're carefully chiseling out Christ's arm, and then because of the flintstones, the entire or arm falls off. You know oh, stuff no. like. That. That would happen. Yeah, would happen. <laughs> and you know, Jesuits being being the uh, uh, one of the one of those Catholic orders who are who are really into into learning mm. you know, and ancient civilizations and uh, all of that. The collection of statues is absolutely it is mind blowing. I mean, th for one thing, because of all the work that went into it. Mm. But for another, also because of the variety. I mean, they uh, they put they put up the great Assyrian winged lions as gatekeepers, mm, wow. and they, uh, and they uh, reconstructed the Alhambra of uh, the Muslims in in Granada in Spain, mm. and so on and so forth. And uh, and over time, these these Jesuit students who would come from from further and further afield. So apart from from all sorts of of European stuff, there was. Uh, you know, students from Indonesia recreated yeah. uh, elements of their culture on the walls. So it be it became a it became a, a a lovely picture book of all kinds of artistic expressions of mankind over time. And it sort of it ranges from a recreation of the part of Romeo and Juliet as <laughs> described by Shakespeare to an alley that is full of drawings of Walt Disney characters. <laughs> yeah. So when yeah. if it's Walt Disney then well I mean that's been around for quite a long time, but at what point does do the drawings and sculptures stop um, in time? Well it, it stopped really when the Jesuits in Maastricht stopped and that is that is about in the 1960s okay. and of course they, they for, for quite some time they had seen the decrease of, of new students mm. and the decrease of the faithful and the churches emptying out and the convents slowly dying out and they could just see that they were not going to be able to 
maintain this um, stone wonderland uh, as a religious order for much longer and mm. uh, eventually the order left Maastricht altogether but before they did the uh, the entire thing has been transferred to a society to, to a stichting so a non-profit mm. which guards and maintains it and opens it to the public and provides guided tours so uh, they come highly recommended all those all those guides can tell a hundred times the stories that I could uh, <laughs> about um, everything in those minds yeah. and of course it is a it is a long long uh, uh, winding road from the situation in the in the 19th century when when the mines were basically accessible to everybody and Mm. There were people who whose idea of fun was to destroy what the priests made as mm. soon as they made it. So there have been there have been a few episodes of of yeah totally wanton destruction of everything everything that they'd made. Well, I imagine it probably wasn't too hard to destroy either if it was made of the I, soft stone, and exactly. it was that so, high so of a easy. humidity. It would be quite easy yeah. just to uh, yeah to go through and. It's such a shame. Yeah, if you just if you just kick it, it it'll mm. come down. So you know, and 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 it was uh, it was attacked viciously with uh, all sorts of uh, crowbars and hammers and what have you. So uh, mm. yeah, and and absolute absolutely targeted violence. But this this also came on the heels of the first efforts of uh, the Jesuits to to uh, seal it off. To uh, you know, protect it by putting mm. doors in, and then the yeah. doors were ripped out again and again. Mm. And and in 1906, the, the destruction was so was so terrible, and the and the outcry following that was so general that then things have been uh, things have been closed off in such a fashion that uh, this could not be repeated again. But you know, if it wasn't if it wasn't uh, vandals in human form, it would be mother nature herself, you know, once in a while uh, parts of it would just cave in and yeah. they'd have to start they'd have to start again. Mm. Was was anyone I suppose they probably were, but do you know if anyone was injured or killed from the Jesuits or other people? Yeah, not from the Jesuits, as far as I'm aware. But yes, there have been there have been uh, fatalities. Yeah. There's, the, there's the story of the of uh, the wife and and children of the Baron Wolf von Dopf, who mm. inhabited uh, Chateau Nirkan. Oh right, yeah. Practically, practically on the border. They were coming back to the castle one day, and and uh, a large uh, thunderstorm broke and then the carriage drove into a mine entrance you know mm. to shield from the storm and then that entrance caved in oh. yeah and also what 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 has happened several times is uh, people exploring in the caves and then getting lost and this has this has happened to jesuits too mm. who you think would know it as the back of their hand and and also they have put great effort into into mapping all the all the hallways okay. and, and making sh making sure that everybody knew their way around even mm. even if they had to get out in the dark even so you know with with things collapsing here and there or people getting confused or whatever it's been touch and go for some of the Jesuits several times yeah and it has happened that people not Jesuits but other people did not find their way out of the maze and, mm. and perished yeah I mean especially I suppose if you didn't have elect trickle or battery powered torches which of course can fail but if you're relying mm. on i don't know lanterns what did they u do you know what they used to to provide light down there yeah well at, at, at first they would they would light torches but in that humidity apparently that produced so much smoke mm. <laughs> That oh, they quickly God. started looking for for uh, different options, and so and yes, and that is still open fire, but in all sorts of ways, all kinds of contraptions and lanterns and things and whatever. And I I, I think they had the, the the most classical ones in 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 use until very recently were sort of petroleum lights, I think. Okay. But last time, last time I walked around uh, in the Jesuit Mountain, it was it was some some type of, of lead light, I yeah, think. Yeah. I'm not sure. Book a tour and ask <laughs> <laughs> about the lights. Yeah, well, I think we looked up. It's from the obviously closed at the moment because as we're recording, yeah. we are still uh, in yes, true. the midst of COVID 
lockdown sort of um so yeah. it reopens on the 1st of january i think yeah uh 2021 yeah that's what it says on their website now yes yes yeah so hopefully you'll be able to book some tours for next year and so we'll get you all yeah. excited and then you'll have to wait but um i think it, it will definitely <laughs> be worth it <laughs> we promise it's um no, i've seen some pictures it, and it looks stunning yeah it's it it absolutely is worth your while you know and, and have a look at their website too because they have incorporated some pictures where where the spots are beautifully lit and all that but then please imagine what it is like when you are walking around and those lights are not there it definitely mm. it definitely adds to the mystique and the suspense of the place i assure you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I um I know at the end of our last episode you mentioned that some smuggling had gone on. Yeah. Would you <laughs> would you like to explain the smuggling? <laughs> yeah, well this is this is something that 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 is always connected to borders. Yeah, you know, uh, that's ta- true. Tax re- tax regimes will always be yeah, stupidly so uh, uh, localized, so they will end at the border. Yeah, well, so there's always smuggling going on across <laughs> borders, and of course these dark mines underground were of course a, a, a terrific. Uh, Route yeah. for smugglers. So, so that that has been going on for centuries, of course. But what what I find more, yeah, more impressive, really, was that it was that it was also an escape route mm. for for people who were fleeing from the Nazi occupation in the Second World War. Yeah. So uh, different kind of smuggling, <laughs> humans. Yes. Yeah. Yes, pilots who had been downed in Nazi territory could cross the border into Belgium and further south. And people who were suffering from persecution could be hidden there and uh, smuggled to other places. And so the caves have been serving as hiding places for centuries, of course, you know, for, for such a long time. Basically, the... The war of liberation of the Low Countries, and I am speaking of the 16th and 17th century now, mm-hmm. so back, back in time. But that war, that war of the Low Countries against Spain was basically fought in in these regions. So that was you know decade after decade there be there be armies stomping across and plundering the land because of course um, well if they were lucky enough to get paid maybe they would pay the farmers something for taking their stuff. But uh, more often than not they would just take it mm. and uh, the people would the people would flee these pillaging armies uh, into into these mines. It's well for safety so you find you find the remains of that as well not so much in Jesuit mountain but there are there are places like that that have been kept in st. Peter's mountain where you can oh. go and have a tour as well and they will they will show you things like that and this is this is where people came and hide so there's a bread oven and there <laughs> a, wa- a water well but there's a well in the in the Jesuit mountain as well because, mm. Yeah, well, you know, they built they built an entire dining hall there <laughs> and the kitchen. Yeah, it uh, it just makes me think of something out of Lord of the Rings or something. It, <laughs> the mines yeah. with ovens and big dining halls in them. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. But then not 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 really the Hobbit variety. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not warm and comfortable. It's no, not. it's what's the temperature in the mines? It's about ten degrees. Yeah. But ninety five percent humidity. Yeah. So oh. Yeah. It's hard to imagine. I don't know if I've ever been in a climate that was <laughs> ten degrees but ninety five percent humidity. Yeah, but it's you know you you don't really you don't really notice the moisture mm. if if you're in there for for an hour or two hours you don't really notice the moisture yeah. you do notice the temperature and once you start getting cold then the humidity starts getting to you yeah so if you if you book a tour <laughs> when you can again I'm sorry I'm really being nasty here wear wear sensible shoes and wear solid clothing I mean last time I was there for a tour it was 35 degrees outside mm. and I just kept basically screaming at people you know bring a coat (laughs) (laughs) I don't believe you (laughs) I can't possibly need a coat (laughs) (laughs) they didn't and then they were so sorry afterwards (laughs) (laughs) so yeah 
no, it's it, the, the, the cold gets to you. It really, it really mm. does, and I and I suppose that is because of the humidity. Yeah. But it's uh, I guess I guess the 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 Jesuit students weren't really very bothered by all that because they you know they were carting around all this stuff, digging out canals and <laughs> ponds, and there's been there's been an entire water system in there as well with fountains and everything. Oh, wow. And they would have been wearing their robes as well, right? To <laughs> yes, for a <laughs> didn't have a problem a with, the, with the cold. No, I did, I suppose I suppose they must have they must have worked themselves into quite a sweat. But it yeah, must have been terrible. Those <laughs> those heavy, long woolen black robes, and then and then pulverizing this soft uh, mm. yellow stone. They must they must have looked. Yeah, they come Weird. out look like they've been baking, covered in <laughs> just white. Yes, yes. But ev- eventually, that that order was rescinded, and they were allowed to 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 just wear regular working clothes when they were playing in the mountains, so to speak. And it, uh, yeah, and then and then uh, when you see when you see pictures of that, you know, the, all, the bunch of happily grinning guys <laughs> in their in their dining hall having their uh, Having their bread and coffee. There's just, there's just, you know, if you didn't know they were Jesuits, there would be nothing to, <laughs> you know, help help you see that. It's just, you know, guys having a good time. Yeah, and I know that when we were talking, that you mentioned there were military in there as well at some point. Yeah, that's the that's the system adjacent to it. Oh, okay. So of course, formerly all these caves were connected, uh, uh, mostly. Mm. But uh, as time has gone by, sections have been closed off, uh, either to to preserve them or because they had gotten too unsafe. And the system next to what is now called Jesuitenberg yeah. has been closed off very, very, very drastically. I think at first during the Second World War because the Nazis were thinking of having a a flying bomb production center there. Mm. And they got this idea too late into the war to actually execute this, but they they had started putting all the electrical wiring in. And then after the Nazis were defeated, the site was taken over by the Allied forces Mm. and they put a joint command center in there, and then it was then it was really sealed off. You know, the, yeah. the mountains of concrete going into there, and climate control systems, <laughs> and um, so they got the temperature up to uh, livable levels and the moisture down. Mm. And uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of military uh, staff working in the mountain, and the city was sort of guessing as to what they were doing. Yeah, and we we really didn't know for sure. Uh, until after the Cold War ended, and we discovered that on the Russian maps for the bombing raids of Western Europe, uh, Maastricht was a big red dot, mm. as in kindly hit this one first. Yeah. And yes, you know, if the if the Joint Air and Ground Forces Command is there, then of course the Russians would want to take that out first. But of course they would have taken out the city as well. Mm. If you're if you're u- if you're using ballistic missiles for this sort of thing, yeah. Anyway, we've um, we've been lucky again. Yeah. And uh, so at 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 some point, the uh, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Mm-hmm. So that's the Western Allies uh, uh, after the Second World War, so to speak. They they decided they w- they didn't need this command center anymore, and um, they left and left all the junk. And uh, primarily tons and tons of asbestos. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, are you able to still visit? But I'm guessing if there's a lot of asbestos, then you probably don't want to. No, but um, the the mines have been cleared up. So so this center can now be visited okay. from time to time. Ooh. Only, only, only very rarely. Yeah. Uh, Limburg's Landschap conducts tours there, mm. but it took several years for for the authorities to get the the money together to clean all the asbestos out. Yeah. And you know, in inanimate objects, you can still do that. But what is worse, really, is that so many of the staff working there yeah. are now sick because they worked in uh, this environment that was full of uh, asbestos fiber. Yeah, especially such a um, quite claustrophobic and close quarters sort of environment. It's not like uh, you're getting a lot of fresh air. I'm sure they were getting some if they were. Yeah. 
No, no, but it's uh, uh, please, please do imagine something uh, very spacious and yeah. cavernous, and uh, and also uh, to a great extent comfortable. The 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 air th the air was purified all the time. Mm, yeah. But but you know, still that that might even have helped the asbestos yeah. fiber to spread. I I don't know. But uh, anyway, there's a there is a an organization of affected uh, veterans mm. and and of course th they are not happy at all no oh. well is there anything that you wanted to add about the jesuits mountain yeah well <laughs> <laughs> i i i don't think i will you know just Go and look for yourself when, yeah. when the, because this is this is one of those places that will be accessible normally. Yes. We just have to uh, have a little patience until uh, normality resumes. Mm. And I'll I'll try and grab some photos as well because I feel like no matter how much yeah. we describe um, things, we will not do it justice. So I either on the YouTube yeah. video if you're watching or on our website, I'll try and pop some pictures so we can have a look at some of the beautiful Good. work. Uh, Very nice. And what are we talking about next week? Um, I'm going back into the city. <laughs> You've had enough of the mountain. No, not necessarily, but it's, <laughs> it's just, you, you do realise this is a totally random affair, you know, I'll, I'll just, but anyway... Uh, next week we will be talking about a very, very small space that is very, very well hidden mm. and that is also not accessible. So you'll just have to make do, do with my stories about it and also uh, if you can manage touch well enough. As always, please look for the little booklet in the series Maastricht Silhouette. The Jesuitenberg is number 70 and the one I'm going to talk about next is number 38 and it is called The Little St. Martin's Court. Mm, well, we look forward to that. Back into the city. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today and don't forget to follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook by searching Meet Maastricht and on Instagram at at meet underscore Maastricht. If you would like to learn more about us, you can also visit our website at meetmaastricht.eu where you can buy tickets and subscribe to our monthly newsletter so you're always up to date. Thanks again and tune in next time to learn more about our beautiful city. Tot ziens.